Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have been dying to film today's video for you guys because I am very passionate about packing. Anything that involves organisation, I am so down for. Now what today's video is not going to be is a what to pack because what to pack very much depends on where you're going and how long you're going for. But I am going to share with you today my top tips for packing for wherever you're off to. So tip number one is outfit planning. It's all about preparation. So what I do before we go away is I get out everything from my wardrobe and anything that I've bought that's new that I wanna take away with me, lay it on the bed or pop it on a rail. And then from there, I start to plan my outfits ahead of time. This basically saves you time when you're away on holiday and also it avoids that situation of overpacking and packing things which you don't need or maybe things which don't actually go with anything else that you've packed. Now what I do, I get my outfits together and I go over to one of my various OOTD mirrors and I start taking mirror selfies so that I've got them all banked in my phone. So then when I'm away on holiday or on a trip, I've got all of my outfits stored in my phone for reference and it saves me time whilst I'm wherever I am in the world. Tip number two, packing cubes. <gasps> These things have been revolutionary to my life. Now they come in lots of different colours. I bought mine off Amazon. They were, I think about 15 pounds. I'll link the ones that I have down below in the description box. But with this particular set, you get eight different pieces within the set. So some of them are cubes um, and they come in lots of different sizes as well. I have beige because I love beige. Um, and here, let's see, here's one. It's got a little mesh panel on the front, a little zip around, and you can put all different kinds of things in these cubes. Some of them are larger, so you can pop in your clothes. Some of them are drawstring bags like this one, so that's perfect for if you've got a wet bikini or wet swimwear, or even for any stinky laundry. But again, it's all about organisation. These packing cubes and these little bags just keep everything in their designated space within your suitcase. It also stops things being all mixed around when it's in transit. And it's also really good for if you're taking shoes away because one of the big packing tips for shoes is to wrap them in uh, shower caps and that's just wasting plastic. So I'm not a big fan of that tip. Instead, I prefer reusable packing cubes. Moving on to tip number three. So when Simon and I went off to Kos, you guys might have seen me wearing this rather ginormous hat. And this led quite a few of you to ask me how I pack my hats when I go away, particularly this one, because Hats don't get much bigger than this. So your hat should be the first thing that you pack. If you have multiple hats, you can stack them on top of each other. Now what I do with most of my hats that I've ordered online, they usually come with a little plastic dome like this. I keep these plastic domes. I also keep the plastic that they come packaged in or wrapped in if it's like a plastic bag. So use your plastic dome because that will help the hat keep its shape in the dome area. Now this area here is an empty space so make sure you also fill that out. You can fill it with, I normally use swimwear or underwear, socks, that kind of thing. And if you don't have a plastic dome, the filling is absolutely necessary. Now to keep the hat protected, as I mentioned, make sure you keep your plastic packaging that hats come in. So once you've got that dome padded out and you've got your hat stacked on top of each other, always start with the largest hat at the bottom, then use the largest plastic wrapping that you have to cover the hat. This one in particular is quite a fine weave, so it will get damaged quite easily when it's in your suitcase. So I just use that plastic to make sure that it's fully protected. Now, the hat should be the first thing that goes in your suitcase. So when you've got a completely empty suitcase, pad out that dome, pop it in, in the plastic, and then you can start to layer your clothes or your packing cubes over the top and around the sides. If you've got a hat like this, then obviously sometimes the ends curl up a little bit. And if you start plonking stuff on the top, then that will just help keep it completely flat. And tip number four, it might seem like an obvious one, but use your space. Make sure you're utilizing all available space within your suitcase. So I just referenced this when discussing the hat packing. 
uh, to make sure that you fill in that dome because that is an empty space. The same goes for any of your shoes, okay? Flip-flops might be a little bit tricky, but if you've got boots for a winter holiday, sneakers, pumps, even heels like court shoes, you've still got a little cavity in there that you can fill. So if you've got any cables, your iPhone charger, a laptop charger, absolutely anything that you can pad into these empty spaces. Socks is always a good one as well because that will also help your shoes keep their shape. So just make sure that you fill all of those cavities out within your suitcase. Tip number five is gonna be one you've heard before, but maybe you've ignored it. Roll, don't fold. This is a biggie and the most important one for me. What I do before we go away, once I've got all my outfits together and all sorted, I steam or iron everything. And I know that seems like such a mission, but it's really, really important to the rolling process. Because once you've got something perfect, you can then do the perfect roll with that garment. And I guarantee you, so long as you do it right, when you get to your destination, no matter how long the flight, because we've been to LA and I've used the roll don't fold technique, and when we've got there, my clothes have been perfect. Obviously there are some fabrics like linen which are just little buggers and they do love to crease. In which case I have a travel steamer which I bought off Amazon. It was super super cheap but it is really really good. It's very very effective and it's quite lightweight so that is another option. However what I would advise you do before you go away is to either check online or call your hotel and check the room specifications to see what they actually have in there because a lot of hotels especially in the states all have an ironing board and a powerful iron and a pretty decent hairdryer as well. So basically, if a hotel has all of those things, you don't need to pack them and you've got more room for clothes. Woo! Tip number six is to get yourself a multi-use travel adapter. Gone are the days where you need to take about eight different travel adapters in your suitcase. Now you can get them that just come in one because a lot of our devices are just powered off USB. So this one actually has all the ports for every different country, every different continent that you need. And it has the USB ports in here as well. So you could be straightening your hair whilst charging your iPad and your phone at the same time. So Simon and I take one of these each and that will be used for all of our devices and it basically saves us room in our suitcase. Tip number seven is packing jewelry. Now, over the last few years, I've gone through lots of different methods of packing my jewelry, because you guys know I am a big jewelry fan, and anywhere I go, I always take ample amounts of jewelry. So I have tried the straw hack. For those of you that don't know, you can use a straw and you can thread your necklaces through and then fasten them so that they basically go within the length of the straw. Make sure you use paper straws, of course. Second tip was to use the little bags, like a little plastic bag. You get them occasionally when you have a blazer and you have a button inside and the button comes in a tiny, tiny little plastic bag. You also get them when you buy shoes, normally high street shoes, because the spare heel tips come in a little plastic bag and it's often a Ziploc bag, but it doesn't have the Ziploc. It's one of those airlock ones. I've used those and put them within a pouch. So basically I put each separate piece, each necklace, and maybe use a bigger one for rings or earrings and then I pop all of those in a pouch because the idea is to not get your necklaces and your bracelets and all that kind of stuff all tangled together. However, I have now moved on. I have evolved from all of these techniques and these methods and I have gone to the jewellery travel pouch. Oh yes. So I ordered this off Amazon quite recently actually. I have yet to use it, but I have given it a little test drive. Um, so inside it has lots of different areas and compartments for all your jewelry needs. It's got a little perforated bit of faux leather chassis, which is for your earrings. And then along the top here, it's got a little padded bar, which is for your rings. At the bottom here, you've got two little zippered pockets as well. So you could put some little bracelets in there as well. There is, a removable pouch in the middle which you could put bangles in or anything that's not necessarily going to get tangled and then on the other side you've got a little section here for your necklaces so you can pin them on these little poppers and then the pendants sit down here in this elasticated pouch so that they don't get tangled together 
So yeah, this one I bought off Amazon. It was so, so cheap. I will leave a link for this one down below in the description box if anyone is interested. Right guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed my tips on how to pack the perfect suitcase. And if any of you guys have got any packing tips or hacks, please do leave them down in the comment section below. I would always love to read those. Until next time, see you. Ooh. Who's your friend this week? Love you, love you. Love you. Snot dribbling out the nose.